You want to know why millennials are so pissed off? It's because we were lied to. You told us if we put our head down, we did what was expected of us. We were yes men. We would be rewarded by our companies. And to be fair, I do work for a good company. I'm not trying to bash them. But we just had our end of the fiscal year town hall meeting in which I found out I got a 4% raise. And I should be happy because some people might not get any raise at all depending on their situation except i also got a notice today that my rent is increasing by 12 percent do you see how that doesn't add up well four percent increase over a 12 percent increase and that is just one bill that is just rent that is not food gas anything anything else you know, I really try to keep it cute. I try to be understanding, be an adult about this whole inflation situation. But at this point, they're playing in our fucking faces. So originally I was seeing stuff go up 20, 50 cent or whatever. But I, what I really want to talk about is honestly the price of French fries and tater tots, tater tots more importantly, they were $2.99. Then they went up to three twenty nine, which was okay. They are now $5.99, $5.99 in the stores. And I am at my wits end. I'm finished. Well, I had an eye open experience with my son this weekend. So my son graduated from college six months ago. And when he graduated, he was going to move back in with us so that he could find a job here in this local area and save up enough money to move out on his own. Had no problem with that. So it's been about six months. He has saved almost every single dime. He works a 40 hour a week job. Um, makes $40,000 a year, which back in my day was sustainable to be able to live. Apparently that's not the case anymore. You can't like live on $40,000, which makes no sense to me. So we were looking online at Zillow, Google to find apartments and houses within his budget, you know, a house to rent because he has a dog. So we said, let's write them all down and let's go check them out because pictures don't tell you what's really going on y'all. So we drove around to some of these and I, I can't even tell you, some of them, I didn't even feel comfortable driving down the street. They were in really, really shady parts of town, looked like a war zone. The whole house looked like it was off kilter, a lot of work to be, like, it just looked like it should be uninhabitable. Like, not, don't rent this, it should just be tore down right? And then when we went to apartments, these apartments that were within his price range, and when I say price range, they were still going for like $800 a month. These $800 a month apartments, I didn't feel comfortable with him living in these apartments. Like when I say those two look like they should have just been torn the hell down, they should have been. The only ones that are decent, like he found a studio apartment that's in a nice neighborhood, very $1,400 for 485 square feet. That is more than my mortgage, right? And then regular apartments, not even like glamorous apartments, just one bedroom apartment that has normal square footage is anywhere from 13 to 1700. We live in Montgomery, Alabama. We're not in a big metropolitan area. There, I don't understand how the housing market has gotten so donkey, okay? And everybody says, well, then he should just buy a house since it's cheaper, mortgage is less than rent. Well, nobody will give him a mortgage loan because he has no credit. Not that he has bad credit. He has no credit. He didn't want to get into debt. So he doesn't have any credit to show for it. So it's like a lose-lose situation. I don't know how they're living. I don't know if he can move out right now because I personally don't feel comfortable with the places he can afford moving to. And he can't afford the normal standard shit that I would have afforded back, back when. How are people doing this and how do we expect our young kids are, I mean, he's not young, he's 25, but how do we expect our youth to get ahead? I mean, really. Let's talk about how ridiculous it is to try and survive and live in the United States right now, currently. Based on inflation, this home that you could buy for $1,785 in 1929, this home came with everything you needed to build a house, plumbing, electric, wiring, trim, paint, everything. You had to build it, but it was $1,785. That's a four bedroom, one bath home. That home based on inflation should be $30,769.47. According to money.cnn.com, the average four bedroom home in the United States right now costs $363,401 or 11.8 times the inflation rate. So how did that happen, right? Inflation says that that house should be 31 grand. Anyway, let's look at some st statistics in the United States right now, kind of associated with 31 grand. The average compact car right now costs $26,000, so you could buy that. Uh, mid-sized car, 32 grand, too much. 
couldn't afford that, right? That house should be cheaper than a mid-sized car. Student loans, $37,338, also more. Food to feed the family of four, $12,565, or about two years of food costs for a family of four is what that house should cost. Average child care expense, $14,760, and that's for one child. So if we multiply that by two for two children, it should cost you about one year of child care to buy that house. Here's a crazy one. Taxes to, to take care of a homeless individual. thirty dollars to $50,000 a year today is what it costs to house a homeless individual in the United States. But based on math and based on the government's own calculation to calculate inflation, that four bedroom, one bath house should cost $30,769.47. Does this make anybody else just extremely sad? The average salary that Gen Z needs to feel like they've made it is around $125,000. And I'm the eldest of Gen Z, which is kind of a unique place to be because I remember being told you have to go to college, you have to make six figures, this is how you make it. Now to see that kind of goalpost getting farther and farther away is just so depressing. Guys, I don't know how the average American is making it right now because from the looks of it, things are just going to hell. For example, if you want to rent an apartment, the landlord wants proof of income three times the rent. And out here in Northern New Jersey, that means a one bedroom, you got to be making 30 to 50% more than the national average. The groceries have gone up like crazy. It's like, it seems like it keeps creeping up ever so slightly, but after three, four months, you feel like it's, it's a, it's a, you know, you feel the increase because last year I would be shopping for myself alone twice a week and it would run me about 80 bucks each trip. Now it's costing me like 125 to 140 per trip. And when I include going out maybe once or twice a week to eat, my, my total for food is coming out to be crazy. It's over a grand. And I know it wasn't like that growing up, you know, it's, it's gotten out of hand. But people are walking around like nothing's, uh, nothing's wrong, everything is fine, everything is dandy. But it won't be long before people are going to have to decide whether to pay the rent, pay the mortgage, or feed their families. And of course, people are going to choose to feed their families. And so, who knows what's going to happen. But... I was at the mall the other day and it was pretty packed, but there wasn't really that many people holding bags. It was just people hanging around window shopping, which doesn't mean squat. It just means people want to get out of the houses and hang around, maybe eat at the food court and, and that the food court was popping, of course, but we're going to have to wait and see. I, I foresee a lot of, a lot more shoplifting. A lot of stores going out of business because of that. And there's going to be a lot of break-ins. A lot of cars being stolen. A lot of a lot of parts being stolen. Wheels, catalytic uh, converters. Um, which is already happening. But it's going to like, you know, more and more people are going to want to do it. Because they have no other way. More and more people are going to turn to scamming and stealing and all that stuff. Because... Things have gotten so expensive. So, we'll see. What's the solution? I really, the only solution is for the banks and the Federal Reserve to forgive all debt. That's the only way. There's no other solution. Even if we, we took 20 nations to war and gave them money to buy from us, it still wouldn't help the situation. So, in order to bring inflation down, we've got to raise interest rates? Yeah. So then, like, housing is going to be even less affordable than before? Uh, yeah. And, like, people are going to lose their jobs. We at the Fed will do everything we can to achieve maximum employment and financial stability goals. Maximum employment? We can't all have jobs? Uh, no, that's not how the system works. What about asking corporations to just lower their prices? Uh, no, don't be ridiculous. <sighs> okay, I'm just trying to understand. With inflation on the rise, all I'm going to say is um, if you see me in a self-checkout line, mind your business. Because if you think 
that I'm gonna do what you think I'm doing, you're absolutely correct, I'm absolutely stealing. Inflation will remain sticky for a decade, and Gen Z and millennials are to blame, says Fortune magazine. It's our fault again. But wait, why is it our fault? Well, according to Fortune, it's because we're spending all our money on <gasps> necessities. In other words, Gen Z and millennials are so broke that we're spending all our money on food and housing instead of like luxury items. The main takeaway here is that inflation isn't going away anytime soon. But not to worry, the 1% have some advice for us peasants. Just don't eat. To save money, maybe you should skip breakfast. Intermittent fasting, am I right? Come on, kids. Instead of spending your money on necessities like food, you should buy some junk to help me and my executive friends buy a new yacht. Instead of let them eat cake, it's don't let them eat eggs. Maybe we should just change the name of America to AmeriCorp, since we're just five companies in a trench coat pretending to be a country. I saw this TikTok the other day about how we all feel broke. And they were saying that um, during the Great Depression, the average American was making $4,300 a year, which is the equivalent of like $95,000 by today's standard. So I had to go look that up. I had to do my own research. And this is what I found. So I found this list of the cost of things in 1938, which is at the very end of the Great Depression. Okay. So you can see the list. Now I'm going to tell you what that actually amounts to in today's numbers. So the wage for one year in 1938 was averaging $1,731, which is the equivalent in today's standard of $37,193. So that was where I was having a big disbelief was in the amount of wages that they made in the Great Depression versus today. Because I make more than that, but it's saying that the national average is $63,400 for today. Now, while I can buy that 37,000 is uh, not a lot of money by today's standard, um, here's where the real kicker is. In the Great Depression, a house cost $3,900. That amounts to an inflation rate of $83,000, where in actuality, houses are averaging over $420,000. Yeah. That's why we feel broke. Oh, but it gets even worse because cars in the Great Depression cost $860, which amounts to about $18,000. But in actuality, cars are going for over $40,000 now. Here's the big one. $420 a year for tuition at Harvard, which should be $9,024. Now that's about what an average college costs these days. Harvard? today is $54,000 a year. So during the Great Depression, they had to spend two and a quarter times their salary in order to get a house. And by today's standards, you have to spend six, almost seven times your salary to get a house. A car costs less than half of their salary. Whereas T by today's standards, uh, you, you are spending almost your whole salary for a year buying a car. I was basing all of those numbers off of people who make $63,000 a year, which does not include me, which is why I and so many of my friends feel broke. <laughs> <sighs> The U.S. is completely unhinged when it comes to our prices. So I'm in the middle of the country right now. I'm in the middle of Missouri where visiting my parents where they live. And I just went to a local chain coffee shop and got a coffee. This latte, it's a it's medium oat milk latte. It cost me almost $8. Like I'm not in a big city having a fancy coffee. This is a drive through coffee in the middle of Missouri just cost me $8. I swear, if millennials can't even afford their little treats anymore. I always get 
you're so pretty. You're such a beautiful girl. And trust me, like, I love it. I eat it up. I love it, you know? I, I take pride in taking good care of myself. And I will actually be watching my face. I'm not just going to only use these wipes. But today I got paid. My check was a little bit over $2,000. Um, I did 10 hours overtime because that's what I'm allowed to do. And then I got a $24 check from the second job that I just started at the mall. Um, I paid my rent. That was like $1,500. Um, $1,553. I paid my car note. That was $406. That left me with $81. I went and got gas because I was on E that left me with $33 and I went to the grocery store to get a can of soup and some bread and some stuff and so I can eat dinner and I went to get some Cheez-Its because I love Cheez-Its <laughs> and they're normally $2.99 a box, but they were like almost $4. And I just... I cried because it's like $4. Like who pays $4 per box of crackers? finally figured out why us millennials are so upset with inflation and the cost of housing. The obvious is that it's a struggle, but we grew up in the 1980s and 1990s and we got to see the most flourishing middle class ever. Our parents were all middle class working amazing jobs. Maybe just one parent was working. We had Christmases and little league and vacation. And some of our, my friends' parents, they had like two, three cars, jet skis, four wheelers, a house on the lake. And they were making like $85,000. And I remember in my mind, just like probably all of you other millennials, were like, man, if we can make 75 or 80 or 100 grand one day, we're gonna be balling, have three kids, have jet skis and all these toys, invest, go on vacation. Now reality sits in. We're in our 30s. People are making 70, 80, 90, 100,000, $150,000 in some locations and going, we can barely get groceries. We can't afford a house like this. The middle class isn't diminishing, the middle class is gone. And I think that is what the shock is to the millennials because we grew up watching the greatest middle class of all time and now we're the age of our parents that they were in the 80s and 90s and it's just night and day. You wanna know why millennials are so pissed off? It's because we were lied to. You told us if we put our head down, we did what was expected of us. We were yes men. We would be rewarded by our companies. And to be fair, I do work for a good company. I'm not trying to bash them. But we just had our end of the fiscal year town hall meeting in which I found out I got a 4% raise and I should be happy because some people might not get any raise at all depending on their situation except i also got a notice today that my rent is increasing by 12 percent do you see how that doesn't add up well four percent increase over a 12 percent increase and that is just one bill that is just rent that is not food gas anything anything else